Raise your Bible up to the Lord right now. Father God, we thank you for all you've done. And we can stand together, united, in this country through your word as we draw strength from the power of your Holy Spirit and invite him in to baptize this sanctuary and the sanctuaries across the country. In Jesus' name, the whole church said amen. Amen. Would you applaud the Lord as you are seated? Oh, man, I'm excited. Out of Psalms, I'll tell you what, I got a, I got a quick verse I want to I wanna give you. We're going to be talking about some cool stuff. Um, we're going to be talking about stewardship uh, today. Last week, we talked about support. We're talking about stewardship. Out of Psalm 50, verses 10 and 11, it says, For every beast of the forest is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills, I know the birds of the hills, and all that moves in the field is mine. All that moves in the field is mine. So what that means is everything is God's. <laughs> I caught you off guard, didn't I? What, what happened is, is God has given us an opportunity to be part of his kingdom. And we have to be good stewards with the part that he gave you. I don't know what it is, and, and, and everybody's got something that they got to be in charge of, they got to be good stewards of, and, and God wants you to, to maximize His kingdom down here on planet Earth. Now, I was looking at these yellow envelopes, so we'll be talking about the youth for just one second, give me one minute, and uh, uh, these are uh, stuck on Pastor Aaron's wall. Uh, right outside is and what this is is this it says I support the way so if you're interested in supporting the youth this year they're going to Branson uh, their goal is to take a hundred kids to Branson amen so let me tell you about the about about your kids when they go to Branson this year I've been going down there since I was eight years old but I never dreamed that we'd take a hundred kids there I've been involved in since we've been taking youth down there and it's just a wonderful time. They'll spend three days down there with no electronics. No electronics, and, and, and they have to be on the dock every morning at 7 a.m. <laughs> Smokey's laughing back there. Listen to me. 7 a.m., and they learn about this thing called the, the Bible. And it'll be preached every morning all day long. And we do water sports, this, that, and the other. But the reason they come down there is to learn about Jesus. Last time we baptized, I think, 10 or 11 people and four got born again. And uh, it's just a great, you can applaud, it's good stuff. Uh, it's, so we're going to pray in a minute. So you can grab an envelope. They're at every location. This is a, uh, somebody pulled this off the wall. This just happened to be a $2 envelope, so... Uh, whoever pulled this off puts $2 in it and they're supporting the youth. Let's pray. Lord, we just pray for uh, the youth. We pray for our tithes and offerings today uh, and everybody as they support your kingdom uh, in the work that's being done here today. We pray for um, that we become good stewards of everything that you've given us uh, and we ask you to bless us, Lord God, uh, as we bless um, our friends and family uh, throughout. In Jesus' name, amen. One more time, applaud the Lord. Hallelujah. As the offering and the ties are picked up. Okay. So stewardship is what we're talking about here today. Uh, the definition of stewardship is the office or obligation of a steward. It's conducting or managing something entrusted into one's care. Uh, so I'm using two examples. A shop steward is somebody that is placed on the job if you're a union man, union woman, and they, they watch the affairs to make sure that you're following uh, the, the union, the union rules, and this kind of thing. So that would be a steward on the job, uh, or a stewardess who works on an airplane, uh, and their job is to monitor the things that are going on uh, in the passenger compartment. Amen. There, there are stewards of the things that are going on in that airplane. Amen. Um, I, I, I usually waited to say this, but I'm gonna say this ahead of time because I feel like it's, it's something that'll speak to you. So in the stewardship, uh, there's going to be spiritual law that we're going to learn about today. And a lot of times, uh, uh, sometimes this thing seems like 
hyper-spiritual, so I, I want to make sure that I take you there. This is a note-taker. This will be as good a information as I can give you guys today. So get it, get it in your spirit, exercise it, and watch spiritual law come alive in your life, but you have to activate it. Amen? So, and what spiritual law is, is, is something that is written in the Bible. This is, this is, this is God's law, it, it, spiritual law, and it's, and it's just kind of like, you know, in a way, it's kind of like the law of the land. We live in a, in a land that has laws in it, and, and there's a law of gravity. If I would drop this book, this book would hit the floor. That's the law of gravity. It doesn't have to be turned on. It's law. Just like spiritual law, it doesn't have to be turned on for it to be spiritual law. It's in the book. It's in print. It's in effect if you'll tap into it. Does that make sense? You just have, you'll have to tap into it. And, and I'm just going to pray that everybody taps into it today. Just, just everybody. And normally I don't just do that. I'm just going to go, I hope that y'all just tap into it. And, and you do your homework here, okay? All right, so here it is. Uh, so as we talk about stewardship, the first uh, mention of stewardship that I can recollect is out of Genesis chapter 1. So Genesis 1.26. Um, and I'll tell you how powerful this teaching is here today this, at this meeting. Is I preached this last night at Weldon Spring, and I, I think there was somebody that called, and they said, hey, Pastor, we, we normally baptize on, on, the, on the fourth Sunday, but... I mean, you know, we want to be flexible because sometimes families are coming in from out of town and these things. Somebody called and said, hey, can we baptize at Weldon uh, Saturday night? I said, sure, you know. Um, after I got done preaching, I was walking through the hallway at Weldon. And one young man, he was about 10 years old, he said, Pastor, he says, I got to tell you something. He said, you was really, you was really preaching today. He said, and I said, well, thank you. And, and the one, there was a, a, a lady over my right shoulder as I was walking back to my office. He said, yeah, he was preaching with passion. He goes, yeah, he was yelling. <laughs> and uh, he was one of the boys that ended up after service getting baptized. Amen. So... Um, Genesis 1, 26, it says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over all the creeping things that creep on the earth. Creeping thing that creeps on the earth. <clears throat> this is the first mention of, of God setting up an environment that we are to be stewards over, and it's called planet earth. So remember this, God, God seeks, God finds, God builds, and God blesses. Let's say that. Okay, God seeks, God finds, God builds, God blesses. One more time. God seeks, God finds, God builds, God blesses. And he does that on people. Because everybody's always waiting for God to come back and Jesus to come back. And when God comes back, when, it, it, when God comes back, it's game, set, and match. But while, while we're here, he's given us the Holy Spirit to get this done. So God is seeking, and he's wanting, he's wanting to build his kingdom through me and you. Amen? So God seeks, God's fine, God builds, and God blesses. Well, so here it is. He makes this man in verse 27. is So God created uh, man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. And this is, this is male and female here. When he, when he says him or he's talking about man, he's talking about creation. Amen? So what this is, is I'm not a mistake. Good, there's three amens. Now there's four or five. There's a lot of times in society, people will try to get, oh, well, he, she, she was just a mistake. He was just a mistake. God made a mistake. Listen to me. You can get the camera in on me. God doesn't make mistakes. God, God doesn't make mistakes. God, God, God does, God's not that, don't, don't, don't lower, don't, uh, don't, don't minimize who God is. God does not make mistakes. And, it, and if you don't quite understand God yet, you will when you get into his kingdom through his word and through his church and through prayer meetings and through Bible studies. So he made God and he created him. He created them. He created male and female. He created them. 
So this is, this is part of God's plan that he, he created this male and the female. And then in verse 28, it said, God blessed them. And God said to them, watch this class. He said, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it or conquer it. That means you and your mate will be able to conquer everything that's going on and planet earth. And you are to be the stewards to govern this place we call planet earth. Amen. Is everybody getting this so far? So this is the first mention of stewardship. And he goes on, he says, you're going to have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the heavens and over the things uh, that move on the earth. Uh, and then he goes on, he says, I give you the plants and this, that, and the other. Um, so God wants us to be stewards over the things that he's given us. So that's at your home, that's your apartment. Wherever you live, God wants you to have dominion over that, and he wants you to rule that. And, 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 and so that you know that, that everything is God's, and maybe if we look at it this way, Maybe we'll take care of it a little better. Amen. If we're in God's house, we want to make sure that we're good stewards of God's house today. So um, that kind of thing. Amen. So remember that God seeks, God finds, God builds, and God blesses. The next mention is in Genesis chapter 6, and he goes after, or he seeks out a man named Noah. He seeks out a man named Noah, and he actually, if you're, if you're to read, I'm, I'm, I can't remember if it's King James or what, it says that Noah has grace, which means favor. I'm reading out of ESV. Uh, start with me in, in Genesis 6, 9. It says these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a, it says he was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. Noah walked with God. What that, means, what that means that he knew if he sought out Noah, he would, he would seek him, he would find him, he'd build, and he would bless him. Now you say, boy, that's a heck of a deal. He's right out in the middle of the desert, and he's building an ark. He knew if he told that young man to build an ark, he would build it. It didn't make sense, but he was a good steward with the things that God has given him. Amen. He didn't have a sawzall and battery-operated power tools or anything. Everything was done by hand then. And he had an old wooden mallet. He goes, hey, I got a wooden mallet. I need to be a good steward. I need to be a good steward of this, and I need to be a good steward of, uh, about my time, so I'm going to be about the Lord's business. Amen. A lot of times people will try to get you distracted, and you need to let them know, I'm going to be a good steward of this time. I'm going to shut off the TV, and me and my family are going to read the Bible. Amen. I'm going to be a good steward of my time. No amens on that. It's like the whole church like, yeah, amen, shut off the TV. Yeah, whoa. I mean, that's what I was expecting, eh? <laughs> so anyways, uh, so we're going to be good stewards. Yeah, remember, he seeks, he finds, he builds, he blesses. Uh, and some of the other people he built his church on was Moses, Ab uh, Moses Abraham, David, Solomon, and Paul. Um, let's just, let's make a quick pit stop in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. Um, this is kind of cool because this, this may help keep things in perspective. So we're stewards. And God has entrusted us with some stuff. It says, you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth. So let's say that again one more time. You shall remember the Lord your God. It is he who gives you power to get wealth. A lot of times before you was born again, you thought you was your own man and you're going to make your own money. And you're going to do whatever you want with it, this, that, and the other. And I get it. But I didn't realize that God empowered me to have a physical body so I could go... So I could go out and make a living. And, and then when you're out there making a living and God's given you the tools to do all these things and do all these wonderful things, you need to give him glory because you're a good steward. I'll go, thank you, Lord. You've given me a strong body that I can go out and make a living for my family. I want to be good stewards of the things that you've given me. Amen. Um, so, so that's kind of cool. And then so now I want to talk to you about that the spiritual law is released in your life when you activate it through your faithfulness, okay? So let's, and, and, and I'll be talking about spiritual law as, as we go through, and no, it's not about finances, and it, I'm not hawking the church for money or anything, so get that out of your way so you can understand what spiritual law is truly all about. So we'll start in Exodus chapter 20, verse 12, and, and we'll see how a spiritual law comes into effect, and you need to activate it in your life. Say, activate. 
A lot of times people end up staying where they're at because they never really activate the Word of God in their life. They come to church. They're, they're very uh, studious about, about coming to church. They read their Bible and they do these things. But they, but they never really activate the Word of God in their life. Amen? We need to be good stewards of, of the Word that God has given and, and activate it in our lives. And, and sometimes we're not good stewards. Um, say, give me an example of that, Pastor. Well, since you tell, I, I'll tell you, I wasn't a good steward uh, the other day. We had some kids over from church, and they were helping clean up the yard, and, um, and the, some of the youth were over, and it was early in the morning. We had them over early, and we, there was still dew all over the ground, so their, their shoes were wet, socks were wet, and this, that, and the other. I said, all right, be, and we had to take them to a youth event out at Weldon. They had a human foosball out there, which was, which was awesome. Um, I said to a, a couple of these young men, I said, well, here, give me your socks, and I'll throw them in the dry, and we'll dry them for you, and they'll be dry, and we can go out to Weldon, and you'll have dry socks. Well, I didn't know that you couldn't throw stinky boy socks in a, in a load of laundry. I was a bad steward with these boys' socks, and I threw them in there. My wife came on and said, hey, you're not the steward of the laundry room. I am. You just contaminated a whole load of laundry that I had in there, and I just thought you could dry it like the rest of the stuff needed to be dry. It made sense to me. Didn't it, guys? There's no problem with it at all. Just say bad steward. Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. So now we're going to sit watch spiritual law start coming into play if we will activate it. So this, and it's nothing really weird or super spiritual or hyper spiritual or anything like this. You'll get your head wrapped around it here in just a second. I just pulled this out. This is, honor, the fa- uh, honor your father and mother that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. Okay, so this is a spiritual law. If I honor my father and mother, I'll be long in the land. And what does that mean? I, it could mean something different to each person. You know, maybe I'll have a long life. Maybe I'm going to prosper in the land. And you say, what's the land? I don't know, wherever you're living or, or your business or whatever. It, but there could be, you're, so you're saying, could there be a hang-up if I have some bitterness towards my father and mother? Absolutely. And I get a lot of questions, oh, well, should I honor my father and mother if they were X, Y, Z? And I said, well, the, the, the goal to honor your father and mother is a command from the Lord. Yeah, there's some moms and dads out there who who could have, have not been really kind, and I understand that, but you're honoring them because God wants you to honor them because they're your parents. It doesn't mean you, you know, have to chum it back up with them and all that kind of stuff. So don't, don't over-spiritualize this. What, what we're trying to do is just obey the, the Word of God, and then in turn, this will be act, the spiritual law will be activated in my life. Does it make sense? Some of you guys are still skeptics. That's why I bring out the John 3.16. This is spiritual law, and now it starts making a little more sense. Everybody's going, yeah. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. So when I believe, I have everlasting life. That's spiritual. Oh, you believe in that? Because when you got saved, you had to believe, and you had to confess with your mouth. And you believe that when you confess with your mouth that you were born again. Or Romans 10, 13, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall, shall be saved. So when I call, I'm saved. That's spiritual law. Just Is it starting to make sense? And you can go through the Bible and just goes, that's spiritual law. I don't, I don't, ha- I don't have to find out if it's true. It is true because it's, it's in the Word of God. All I have to do is activate that in my life. And it's starting to make sense. So you just figure out if you're going to activate the rest of the Bible in your life. And some people, some skeptics, and, and some of your friends go, oh, don't do that, because he's just, no, I'm just, I'm just giving you the word, and you activate it in your life if you want to. It's kind of like walking around with a credit card in your wallet, and you're never activating it. You try to pay it the pump, you go, it hadn't been activated yet. Your wife didn't activate it. <laughs> oh, don't activate the Cabela's card. Right? Same thing, only like way different. <laughs> and then you will go to Deuteronomy chapter 28. And uh, in, in just so you know, in Malachi 3.6, it says the Lord never changes. Amen? 
So Deuteronomy chapter 28. So what this says here is these are, these are the blessings for obedience. You say, oh, it might be for the Israelites, but not for us. This is for everybody that's grafted into the kingdom of Israel through the blood of Jesus Christ. You take on the very spiritual nature there. Amen. And what it says is it says, and if you are faithful, and obey the voice of the Lord, your God. And then it goes into all the things that you're going to be blessed with. And, and some people, I, I couldn't imagine. You can't imagine your life being blessed. Why not, I ask? Why not be blessed? We got to be down here on planet Earth. Why not activate the Bible? Why not get into the Bible and just go, you know what? I'm going to try it out. What do I got to lose? Despair, pain, anguish, poverty. And what it says, I'll just start out in four. It says, blessed shall be the fruit of your womb, fruit of the ground, fruit of your cattle, increase of your herds, the young of your flock. And he just goes on and on and on. He says, blessed, blessed, blessed. Or happy, however you want to look at it here. And then it, and it talks about the blessing for disobedience, and it starts in 2815, and you can just read that. So start taking notes, and you can go home and challenge yourself on this. Go, this is spiritual law, that, that if, if I activate this in my life, I'm going to be blessed. Remember? He seeks, he finds, he builds, he blesses. He's wanting to build a church on somebody. It might as well be you. Because here's the deal. God's, watch this now. God's kingdom is going to go forward. You just got to find out if you're going to be part of it or not. Hey, if his kingdom's got to go forward, he might as well build it on me. Amen? Um, and, and I backed up the New Testament version of that out, out of Galatians 3.14 on that, on that Deuteronomy 28. Uh, just uh, Can we put that up on, on the board there? Uh, Galatians 3.14. And it, and it talks about, here, let's do it here. It says, so that in Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles so that we might receive the promised spirit, what? Through faith. So this promise is going to come on us as Gentiles because we're born again believers through Jesus Christ. So that means it's going to be activated if you tap into it. Starting to make sense now? Okay. Um, Mm -mm -mm. let's go to second corinthians chapter nine now this is this is where people really start to struggle here and, and if you don't like this you can take this up with the apostle paul when you get to heaven i'm sorry uh so here's what the apostle paul says so this is another spiritual law say spiritual law and we have to be good stewards with what the things that God has given us. Now, I'm going to break this down, and I know you've heard this a lot, but you may have never heard it broke down this way. So the Apostle Paul is, is, is getting his church together uh, and, and taking up a collection for the church in, in Jerusalem. He says, the point is this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. So this is spiritual law, and I believe this is physical law as well. And whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. But you need to hear all this scripture before you shut me down. Here you go. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God, now here's where it starts to get good. And God is able to make all what? All grace abound to you. And what this is, is favor. He can make all favor abound to you, just like he did Noah. Noah was filled with grace or favor. And that was back in the Old Testament. Remember, God never changes. So don't do the Old Testament, New Testament God. He is Jehovah God, the God over all. Amen. Amen. This is spiritual law. Follow me here. At all times that you may, what does it say? That I may abound in every good work. So every work that I'm going into that is good, God is going to help me abound in it. Not be stuck at the same thing. He wants me to, he wants me, he's trying to give us a, a promotion in our life. If we will activate this spiritual law in our life. As it is written, he is distributed freely. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. Listen, two verses and we're done. Rise with me. Two verses, we're done. These, these, these two verses will pull the whole message together here for a second. So here it is. He, he meaning God, who supplies seed to the sower. And use whatever you want for seed. Use whatever you want. Use uh, car rides. Use money. 
uh, use hugs, use birthday cards, use whatever you, whatever you want as seed, whatever that is, um, high fives or I don't know, you think of whatever it is, whatever you do, you guys do it good, Bible studies, you're hosting, whatever that is, that seed you, that you're putting back into the kingdom of God, okay, so here it is, he meaning God who supplies seed to the sower, so he's going to supply you seed if you'll sow and bread for food, what does it say class? Will supply and oh oh. What does it say? He'll what? Multiply. Say that one more time. He'll. Multiply. This is this is spiritual law. You say why is it spiritual law? Because it's in print. This is spiritual law that that he's going to supply seed for those who are sowers. Leave money out of it. Leave money out of it. If I'll sow, if so, he's given me the word. So all I'm doing is just sowing the word today. And you heard about that little boy that stopped me in the hallway, said, boy, pastor, you was really preaching. And I was and I was throwing seed out. He caught it. He got baptized. The kingdom of God is blessed. When I was walking, I was was, thought I was going to walk out of the last service and a young girl stopped me and she said, I want to be baptized, too. And all I did was, all I did was throw some seed out like I'm doing now. And when's she going to get baptized? I don't know, but she, she felt the movement of God in her heart and she wants to be baptized. So God's given you all some seed. Let's finish the thought here. Stay with me. He's going to multiply the seed. What is it for? He'll multiply the seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness and you will be, what does it say? You will be enriched in... Oh, hold on now. Well, they, they, it's either spiritual law or it's not. Some, forget the religion. For, stop with religion. You will be enriched in every way. What does it say? To be... Uh, stop. Now it's, I need to do this so I can be generous in every way. Not to be stingy. You know, little Johnny, he's got two suckers. One's for him and one's for him. <laughs> Did you see that? You know, little Johnny, he got, he got, Johnny, who's the two suckers for? He goes, well, this one here that I'm sucking on is mine, and this one here is mine too. <laughs> see, God thinks it's that funny when I went and seen Franklin Graham down at the state capitol on Tuesday with a bunch of people from this church and a bunch of Christians all over the state, if not country. We can bring the praise team and the deacons and pastors up. Franklin Graham, Pastor Troy told me something that, that, that really stuck. He said, you know, when you listen to Franklin Graham, he looks like his daddy and, and he preaches like his daddy. And you say, well, why was he preaching about it? It must have been, it must have been a real ripper. It must have been really high and lofty. It must have had some wild theology for everybody. Nope. The same message his daddy's been throwing out for 70-something years. And you say, you've got to be kidding me. They preach all over the world because the message never changes. You give me an opportunity, the Grams, they just keep throwing it out. And they've been in the Gospels for 70 years plus, preaching the same message over and over. The first thing he said is, Jesus saves. Amen. I don't know how many people got born again there. I don't know. I'd imagine probably a bunch. But God gave Franklin Graham a podium and a platform at the state capitol on Tuesday. And you say, well, everything must have been just peachy. The sun was probably shining. It was 80 degrees and, and everybody was, no, it was pouring down rain and it was cold. It was freezing cold because I was there. Seed. If you want your seed to grow, sometimes you got to have rain. 
And God is wanting to do something in your life just like he is Franklin Graham. God don't love Franklin Graham any more than he loves you or me. Is he a big deal in God's sight? You better believe it. Are you a big deal in God's sight? Oh, buddy, you are. So if we'll keep doing this thing, and if I'll keep preaching out of this book, and you guys will keep preaching out of the book, and you'll keep loving and high-fiving and, and hugging and doing things like that, his kingdom will expand. It has to. Because it's spiritual law. And Pastor, don't you ever worry about this side or the other? No, I don't. I really don't. Don't you worry about this guy coming after you and this guy coming after you. And then say, oh, oh, nope, 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 and nope. See, if you're doing the work of the Lord, there's always going to be somebody coming after you. So today, close your eyes. I'm going to ask you a question. What is it that he gave you? And some of the first answer might be right now. I don't know how, how you guys got here. And you say, well, I don't have much. If you got salvation, you got everything, friend. I'm not talking about the house that you got or the fancy car or whatever. That's not what I'm talking about. What did he give you? You got a song in your heart today? Go share it with somebody. When you leave here, you go into a store or a donut shop or a quick trip or whatever, hold the door for somebody. Sometimes when I go down there to quick trip or whatever, I just stand there and I hold the door and I hold it sometimes just a little bit longer. I just Sometimes I just stand there and hold it for people that I think are getting out of their car. You know what that is? That's seed. Sometimes we got to slow down just a little bit and look at what we got instead of focusing on what we ain't got. I got a bunch. I got a lot of good friends, and I got a Savior named Jesus who loves me. I got a whole bunch of stuff. Would you pray with me today? Father God, we pray for our friends here today. I think they got it. I really do, Lord. I think they got it. Everybody's got something here. And if they ain't got you yet, I pray that they come to know you as Lord and as Savior. And then, Lord, get them going on something. Give them an assignment, just like you did Noah. And let them walk it out right here and right now. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Would you applaud the Lord in the house today? Amen. Oh, oh, oh.